Hey everyone, this is Jim Need. Um, I want to do a quick overview of a couple of large uh, spoil board router bits that I've tried recently on the CNC machine. Um, these are billed as spoil board bits, but what I really wanted to see is what would be the best for planing off large wood panels, like for river tables, for example, where I might be planing off a combination of mesquite and epoxy. Uh, you know, this, uh, that's a pretty hard task. Uh, you're cutting up a lot of wood in a day and the epoxy tends to gum up the bits and stuff. So these are really expensive kinds of bits. They can cost anywhere from two or $300. So, you know, um, and there's a lot of varieties out there. So I have two different ones here that I bought. This one I recently, uh, tested out pretty extensively. And so I wanted to tell you what I found out about it so that you can make a smarter decision than I did. You don't have to buy two. You probably just want to buy this one. Um, so hopefully it'll save you a little money um, and, and some time. This is the, the model. It's a three cutter uh, model number RC-2263 from a Mana Tool. Um, it's, it's got the three cutters that are screwed on so you can rotate them when they get worn out. Um, I had uh, previously used this one, the, the 2251. It works pretty good. Um, this one has two cutters in a flat position horizontally and two in a vertical position. Um, I've used this one a few times. It works great on the MDF like this spoil board on my uh, CNC. Uh, but you have to really be careful it tends to overheat and you can see the bottom of these cutters how they've gotten hot and then the uh, uh, you know, wood is baked on I, I like to use a big bit a planing bit like this to slab or level slabs of like mesquite for tabletops and stuff uh, we, some friends and I make tables once in a while and uh, you know we, it's these slabs don't fit in our planer so we use the CNC as a planer and um, that old bit just tends to, it's really hard to get it to, you have to run it pretty fast in uh, across the, the material and make sure you don't get the bit um, moving too or spinning too fast to, it tends to burn um, so I'm going to try this new one uh, I think with the small contact area with the wood I'm hoping this burns a lot less easily and because uh, it doesn't have as much surface rubbing against the the surface of the wood so we'll try it out on a piece of mesquite today and see how that goes Okay, this is what the bit looks, or the cutter looks like after about 10 hours of continuous cutting on some epoxy tabletops today. Um, I changed the corner of the bit that I was cutting once. It was still cutting okay, but I just wanted to see if it made any difference because I couldn't tell if it was getting dull or not, but it, it really didn't make a difference. So it wasn't it wasn't dull already from the about half day worth of cutting so I wouldn't have had to change it um, you can see it's got a little dirt from the, the epoxy powder and stuff but overall it cut great all day long um, never had any issues with it it cuts much cleaner than the other Amana bit I have and I think it's uh, because it doesn't have a big wide section of carbide on the um, you know in the cutting path all the time it's just cutting with these three tips so it cuts very smooth, but it doesn't build up a lot of heat. So um, when I ran slow or fast, 
it, it worked very well. And then with these long angled 45 degree edges, it's able to cut into um, higher areas uh, when planning off those big boards. So it uh, worked very well. Um, um, this works definitely works a lot better for planing off the large river tables um, than the other Amana bit that I had. So in summary, this RC2251 uh, model from Amana um, worked great for uh, spoil boards that were made out of this MDF. Uh, planes it off very smoothly, works fine, but you can see when you start using it on wood material with epoxy and other things, it really starts to fill up these cracks and, and um, kind of gums up and, and it runs a little hotter. And uh, I think part of the reason is you've got these long surfaces on both the horizontal and vertical uh, the placed bits that they uh, tend to rub more. They have more surface area. So um, on MDF, they're fine. Uh, you got to keep it moving, um, um, and you can't plunge with these either. If you look at the profile here, it's just got this little bit of a hollow cavity, but you can see you, you have to start this bit off the edge uh, of the wood and plane into it uh, from the side. You cannot plunge down in the middle of a cut. Um, and so, you know, if we're doing a big planing job, um, as long as you create your tool paths correctly, that's okay. But a bit that can plunge in anywhere in the middle of say a tabletop is nicer in my opinion um, so this one works you know great it's a fine bit for mdf uh, but i definitely don't recommend it for like you know big river tables on um, these the the uh, cutting edges the way they're oriented here just don't work that good for epoxy they gum up and stuff and uh, you can't plunge into it now this one on the other hand i was very happy with this is the second bit uh, that I bought uh, for this. This is a model RC-2263 um, and and with these bits the way they're oriented you can see um, this this bit can actually or this cutter can actually do a plunge cut. Um, it's got a large hollowed out cavity in here and the shape of the you know the metal that holds there is smaller than this tip and so you can see these don't have flat oriented bits or, or cutting edges um, they're all three horizontal and only a very small tip is making the bottom um, contact and then the sides are great for leading into uh, higher areas so um, this one is the one I ran on a lot of mesquite river table uh, probably 40 or 50 square feet worth of table we milled off on both sides and took some pretty heavy cuts uh, I took on our th with this three horsepower spindle that I have on the CNC we probably took a few cuts that were easily a hundred hundred and twenty thousandths or so and I think I was running um, 40 or 50 inches per minute with this um, they had cut very clean handled epoxy very well you know it's you can see some of the epoxy residue on here but it, it was pretty easy to clean off uh, never got hot um, so this this is a good all-around bit um, it, it doesn't quite cut as smooth on the MDF for a, an actual uh, CNC you know spoil board like this but on the other hand who cares you're probably gonna do a quick sanding job on this anyway in uh, before you put it into use so uh, you know for an all-around good bit especially for like river tables this one's really good and the other thing I wanted to say about these large bits are uh, they take a lot of horsepower um, they are spec to run at like 18,000 rpm which seems incredibly fast for a huge bit like this uh, but the reason for that is, is these CNC spindles have a flat torque curve so they basically have the torque at full rpm and at minim minimum is the same torque level. What that means is a 24,000 RPMs of the spindle, it's a three horsepower motor. But when I run it at 8,000 RPMs, it's only a one horsepower motor. Um, you know, so you have to, you know, a big bit like this takes a lot of horsepower. So you have to run at a pretty high RPM to, to generate enough horsepower to really cut with these. Otherwise, you're going to be taking really light cuts. Um, so that's 
one of the reasons why Avid now has an 8.8 .8 horsepower spindle is, I mean, it's a monster, and you 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 could ask yourself why would you ever need that much horsepower uh, on a CNC router, but this is one good reason why. I mean, if you if you have a large CNC and are doing a lot of river tables with it with big bits like this, uh, you really want that horsepower because then you don't have to run. You know, you could run that down probably 12,000 RPM and have plenty of horsepower um, to cut deep, uh, fairly deep passes all day long with that. Um, the other thing to note with these is, you know, I already mentioned that you can't do a plunge cut with this one, but this one you can, so you can, use, you know, use a pocketing or, or kind of tool path like that, um, and you don't care what the, you know, what the... Uh, cam software does as far as generating that if it starts in the table middle of the table plunges in and cuts around versus coming in from the side it doesn't really matter but the one thing to, to consider here and be careful of with your uh, feed and speed settings is normally when these are cutting they're just cutting on the leading edge um, you know which which is you, you know you kind of dial in your speed your feed speeds and everything for that but when you do a plunge cut, um, this whole area is cutting uh, wood at first. When it first starts to move, it plunges in, and then it has to move across. And so it's actually cutting about twice as much wood for the first half diameter of this bit. And you've got to be kind of careful there. Um, you know, if, you've, if you're running on the edge, and you know, you've got your speeds and feeds set up so that you've got enough horsepower but not a lot of, to spare you can stall your motor pretty easily as soon as it st makes that first x or y move after the plunge so make sure you you know when you're doing this that you save a little extra horsepower uh, for that first move on the plunge um, i stalled my motor a few times there until i just had to slow it down or take lighter passes to make sure i didn't uh, kill it there so that's just something to think about when you're when you're using these. Um, but again, this this is a very nice bit for large river table uh, planing.